Do you feel all right? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to let me know that you feel all right. We're going to release some positive energy here this morning. Okay? I feel all right. One time. I thought that you had done this so many times that everybody knew it. So I'm going to, we're going to have a rehearsal. And it goes like, ah, hey, hey, I feel all right. One time, ah! No, no, no. I do the singing. You let out the energy, okay? Ah, hey, hey, I feel all right. One time, ah! Good. Ah, hey, hey, I feel all right. Two times, ah! Ah, hey, hey, I feel all right. Three times. Ah, 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 good. Ah, hey, hey, I feel all right. Five times. Ah, 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 good. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning I wanted to share with you how we can prosper together. How in our diversity, we can leverage our various strengths and work together towards building a prosperous world. Earlier on this week, I spoke about hope at the first morning show. And yesterday, I spoke about overcoming fear, which is an impediment to us achieving our greatest aspirations. Today, I want to end with talking about peace. And these three words, hope, fear, and peace, are words that are magical, that are transformational, or could be if we all always thought about it. How much, if hope was always what drove us, and we had the ability to overcome our fears, what that would mean. If we went back to the end of the Second World War, the amount of lives that were lost, property destroyed, hopes that were dashed, dreams that were not, never accomplished, 65 million people perished. And since then, we have seen a world that has created opportunities we have overcome poverty in ways that nobody ever imagined. Over two billion people have been lifted out of poverty in the last 20 years alone. We've seen the amount of people who've died in conflicts reduced significantly. That in the last five years, we've seen the number of people who died in conflict increased tenfold than it was 10 years ago. We've seen a threat, we've seen conflicts arise, not between countries, but over ideology and over resources. We've seen that boundaries, which we thought were a thing of the past, man-made boundaries that we don't see have now suddenly become what divides us. When for almost 70 years, we walked towards overcoming those barriers. But when we talk about peace, it's not just the absence of conflict. Because conflict <coughs> is the end result of our inaction. Peace is the prevalence of justice. It is a respect of human dignity, giving every person the opportunity to achieve their greatest potential. And that's why this organization was founded. That's why we've emphasized on this whole notion of peace is possible. And we may live in the total comfort of, of the developed world and not worry about what happens in other parts of the world. But five years ago, no one would have thought that a conflict in the Middle East would create the kind of challenges that we face in the world today. 
that is changing the way that we travel, the way that we interact with one another, that is creating fear in our communities, that is causing people to migrate, that is causing people to attempt to cross the Mediterranean Sea and deserts to find a better place for themselves. Peace is something that we can find within each one of us. Peace is something that we can share with one another. So if you don't mind, as we close this last morning show, I wanted to end up with saying peace be unto each one of you. And I would like us to do this exercise to turn to the person next to us and say peace be unto you. And you can hug too, right? You can give a high five too. Yeah. And you can wear a big smile on your face too. And you can and you can feel the magic too, right? You can feel the magic of this moment. If you can feel the magic, let me hear, let me see you do it one more time. Come on! Everybody!
see the things that you guys are doing at the local level and around the world. Now, before we get into those things, though, we want to have a little fun. You guys come here to have a little fun today? Yes. Yes, you did. We're going to start out with a little challenge this morning, okay? We're going to get, get your creativity pumping and flowing. Now, think back to yesterday. Yesterday, we challenged you to, to what? Innovate. We're going to really challenge you to innovate right now, and there's prizes if you do well. Talk about, talk about that. We taught you how to engage. We told you to be innovative. Now we want you to engage with each other, to be innovative, and create change. But we're limited in how much change we can create this morning because we're all in one room and you know it's, it's, it's hard to get out there and get active. But what we want you to change this morning is we want you to change what you're wearing. So you got up this morning, you looked in the mirror, you all think you look good. Now we want to see. How can you engage with people that you don't know, get into a group, and create with the materials you have in your purse, in your bag, in your briefcase, on the table, the most creative costume that you can in a group, and we're going to bring the best costumes up on stage to win a GCI swag bag. Swag bag, yeah. Look, in life, we don't always have all the resources that we need to create major change. We have to change using the resources that we have. So you guys are going to use the resources that you have. So get into groups, pick one person to wear the costume, everybody come, come together and try to uh, make something creative. I want to see your creativity shine. Are we ready? ready? That's what I like to hear. Let's give ourselves a few, uh, 30, three minutes. We're going to have three minutes, right? Get creative, guys. Get creative. Here we go. You've got buckets, you've got flags, you've got ties. What can you create? Go, go, go. Look, i got a hat. <laughs> Come on, man. 
handed over the head of each, each contestant. You guys scream when, if you're going to vote for it. Are you ready? Contestant number one. Not bad. There you go. Everybody gets JCI glasses. Contestant number two.
Make sure you guys look for that. It's coming in the next couple of days. We'll be posting that on the JCI website and, 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 and the JCI Facebook page. Make sure you guys pay attention to each episode of The Impact Factor to see what others are doing around the world. And also, you can log on and actually submit your local and national stories and the project that, you, that you're working on to be in a future episode of The Impact Factor. So watch that, share them, let's show the world what JCI is doing to have impact. That is so cool. I think we're all working really hard on our local chapters and to be able to give it to Matt to do something wonderful with and be able to showcase it to the world is a really, really cool idea. So speaking of creating impact, there are three campaigns currently going on in JCI and we are super excited about them. So as we speak about them, I think that we have people that are really qualified to speak about it. Yes, it's right here. Now, we're gonna, we'd like to welcome up uh, EVP Andres Gutierrez to the stage to tell us a little bit more about the importance of advocating for a better world and how we can empower young people to advocate for positive change using these campaigns. Got your mic and everything, we're all ready. Give it up, Remy Andres! Good morning, thank you very much. Thank you to our I'm very funny and excited host. Good morning, JCI. Good morning. I also want to invite our EVPs uh, from Asia and the Pacific and our president elect, Alex Theo, to the stage, please. Alex. And also our EVP from Africa and the Middle East, Itai Manjere. Morning. And of course our EVP from Europe, Kevin Hintz. What? What is Kevin? Oh, here, here we go. Good morning. Good morning, dear friends. Uh, we are here to talk about a very, uh, I would say, not only necessary, but a strategic uh, uh, issue for JCI, which is advocacy. The mission of JCI is to provide development opportunities that empower young people to create positive change. At the center of lead campaigns, JCI is aiming to inspire, motivate, and empower young people to raise their voices for the for their causes, for their solutions to create a better world. At the center of the JCI campaigns, we want to provide young people with opportunities, with uh, toolkits, with means on how to raise their voices, to unite the voice of young people around the world to create sustainable impact. Advocacy is to claim for public support for a cause, or for a solution, or for a policy. That's why we wanted to talk to you more a little bit about the campaigns we are conducting now. And I, will, I would like to introduce to our EVPs to talk to us a, bit, a little bit more about the campaign for Europe, a step up for Europe, the campaign on Africa, I am Africa, and our global campaign campaign who better than our uh, president-elect Alex Theo. So I will give you the floor, please, first to talk about uh, our campaign in Europe. Thank you, EVP Andres and my dear colleagues. I, this this setup gives great flashbacks of our caucus last year, doesn't it? I mean, it feels like it's feeling a little bit a bit more relaxed maybe. So, um, yeah, I wanted to say a few words about the Step Up for Europe campaign, which we decided to launch last month at the European Union know-how transfer. It all stems from a needs analysis, which is that um, we face lots of threats in the world, including in Europe, be it from extremism, from lack of opportunities, from youth employment, from migration, not just from outside of Europe, but inside. And we as a continent, not just the European Union, but the whole continent of Europe, need to step up to face these challenges, and who better than the young people to do it? Why is that? Because we've seen that young people are too busy, sometimes with their smartphones, with their busy lives, with their, with their activities to actually get involved in politics. And why is that? Because we all think that we individually cannot make a difference. So why should we bother wasting our time to do it if we have no impact? That's wrong. Every single person can make an impact, and this is why we set up this campaign. 
which has four goals and four ways. The first is simply to bring young people together to shape up the future of Europe, which is why we have these calling cards, and bring them around JCI and European values, which are democracy, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of movement. The second thing is to get young people involved in the political process at a local, regional and national level, whilst, uh, which echoes the uh, activities of several of our national organisations, for example JCI Germany, which is very involved in the political side as well. <laughs> Deutschland, Morgan. And, um, and to, yeah, to get young people involved in the grassroots level. The third thing is simply to get people to just vote at the European elections in May, which are going to be a massive turning point for the future. And the fourth is to link it to JCI. When we're talking grassroots involvement, it's getting involved in active citizen projects and getting members involved on the ground, because it is the members on the ground who create the sustainable impact every day. So uh, this is how we want to succeed and how we will succeed using the active citizenship framework. And finally, just on a JCI perspective, you as members, as leaders, as future leaders or current leaders of your local organisations, the advocacy campaigns are a great tool to recruit new members and a great selling point as well. So that's how we can actually grow our JCI local and national organisations and make ourselves even more relevant in the future. So we will all step up for Europe together. Thank you very much. And please vote for me as the EVP. One, two, okay. Good morning. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the I Am Africa campaign and just give you a little bit of uh, background on how this campaign came about. Uh, it's in line with, we, we call ourselves young active citizens, but you ask yourself who's a young person, who's an active person, who is a citizen? So we zero in on what a citizen is and we firmly believe that a citizen is someone who belongs, someone who identifies with a particular locality. And in this particular uh, instance, we're talking about the Africans. Africans within Africa and outside of Africa. And we say we want to be able to inspire and educate and engage young people across the continent and outside of the continent to take responsibility for the various challenges that we face uh, every day. So these young people, we are, we've already started engaging them. You realize that we've got a very vibrant online presence. We've got a vi vibrant Facebook page. We've got um, a vibrant Instagram page and Twitter page. And at the moment, we are inspiring them to take action by sharing stories of how some young people who have come before us have been able to change the script of our present day uh, uh, environment. We've got the likes of Kofi Annan, the likes of Nelson Mandela. Uh, last week we were posting uh, and celebrating how Ethiopia now has the first female president. So we wanted to move to a place where as young people we believe that we can move and shape the future of our continent. Uh, and that's what we're doing uh, with the I'm Africa campaign. But also to tie in with the biggest picture of the continent. African heads of states in 2013 came together at the African Union and they came up with an agenda 2063, which is a, a socio-economic blueprint uh, to transform Africa. And as a young people, we also want to be able to participate because we believe that the future is in our hands as a young people. So as such, we also want to participate and it's an opportunity for us to be able to also engage with with heads of state, with, with local government, and contribute in a, in, a, in a small way, certainly using our active citizen framework uh, to implement sustainable projects. And that's pretty much what we're doing as, uh, as our Africa campaign. And to wrap up this year, we have an Africa 2.0 uh, conference that's going on in Johannesburg at the end of uh, November. So that's pretty much what we've been doing uh, as I'm Africa, and we believe that the future is bright if we continue to engage for the good of the continent and the world. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Well, I thank my colleague uh, in Europe for Step Up Europe, and I am Africa. All of this, at the end of the day, is to achieve what us as an organization is trying to achieve, which is the everlasting true peace. And but in order to achieve that, we first have to understand that peace is not just the, in the absence of violence, but it's the prevalence of justice. And until today, some members did ask me questions such as, uh, there are no longer world wars, there are no longer real physical wars, so what are we talking about when we uh, engage the whole organization in believing uh, or mobilizing members to believe that peace is possible. Basically to say that there are still injustices in parts of the world and JCI will be there at the front line to, to give hope to our future generations that true justice is still possible, that peace is still possible. And uh, in the past few years, uh, I believe that uh, Step Up Europe and Africa, all of this is part of our greater campaign, which is peace is possible in their small form. And I do, uh, and I do hope that all members around the world will initiate uh, a peace is possible campaign in every single national organization. Uh, a few years ago, we had peace summits where we engage government sectors, uh, business sectors, to come to believe that peace is possible. And after all, JCI aims to be the organization that unites all sectors of society to create possible, to create sustainable change, means that the perspectives of all three sectors have to be the same. And what better perspectives to start with than peace? So this is why we start to mobilize members around the world, young people around the world, give them the hope that peace is possible. And truly, at the end of the day, then we can realize the true purpose of our organization, which is to strive for everlasting world peace. So this is what the campaign is really all about. And I hope that in the future years, we will still continue to grow this campaign. And of course, uh, Thank you, Europe. Thank you, Africa, for already starting this initiative. And I'm sure that Americas, Asia, we will start doing, start working towards this as well. And decades to come, this vision will come true. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, yes, please put your hands together. I would like to ask you a question, and I will ask uh, a short answer, Twitter version. <laughs> First, for Kevin. Uh, what, what goals does this campaign have in the coming year, and what about the next decade? Yeah, it's important when you're running a camp. Thank you, EVP Andres, for this very interesting question. Uh, sorry. It's important when you're running a campaign to have a, a strict timeline on it. So we're looking at May 2019, European elections to really kick it off and have a first wave of impact from then, that will be used as a springboard, a trampoline to move even further forward and to generate impact during the five-year mandate and the five-year term of the European Parliament. So in our case, the timeline is extremely clear. May 2019 and then the five years beyond that to spread the impact, spread the word and generate a sustainable solution on the ground. Thank you very much. And this one. This one is for PP Itai and about I am Africa. What are some ways this campaign has achieved its mission over the past year? Okay, thank you very much. Um, I spoke about our three main goals, which is inspire, to engage and to educate the young people. And we're engaging young people online so far. We have been also able to, to join hands with the, with the Mandela Foundation conference that I'm talking about to further the conversation because in 2016, 2016 we had the inaugural uh, Africa uh, Youth 
conference in, in Kenya, in Nairobi, Kenya. And now we're taking it to Africa 2.0, and as young people for four years will be engaged in Johannesburg to take the conversation further. We are attracting even young people, but not necessarily uh, JCI members. And we hope that they can also be inspired to take action uh, and as young active citizens, wherever they are. So that's pretty much, those are the next steps for us that uh, we are not going to complain. Thank you very much. As you can see, we can create positive change. We can engage young people easier when we have these tools, these, these uh, campaigns to support us in raising our voice as young people. And finally, for our EVP of Asia and the Pacific, about peace is possible. How does this campaign inspire young people to create change in their communities? See, like I said, uh, thank you for the question, EVP, of course. Uh, if the seed is planted, the right seed, the hope that peace is possible, and I, and I truly believe our young people out there still have hope that to, to be able to live sufficiently, to sustain, to grow, but sometimes in a lot of parts of the world, that hope is lost. And I, and I really hope that this seed that we are planting, the seed saying to members, to young people, that this hope, this, this hope for peace is still there. And uh, I really do hope that members will take this seed out to their communities, give more hope that uh, a, a prosperous, a good life is still possible. And at the end of the day, this is what we are, we are, we are trying to achieve. Not, to, uh, again I said, peace is not just the absence of war, but it's the prevalence of justice and truth. This justice, by giving people hope, I hope that uh, all members around the world will go around, create more projects, create more hope, and only by really having the hope that it is possible, it will be possible. I strongly believe in that. Thank you, EVP. Thank you very much to our EVPs, and please remember to support us in our campaign to be elected as past EVPs. <laughs> Continue enjoying the Congress. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give EVP to EVP Magier, EVP him, and EVP. Let's give them all a big round of applause. We appreciate this conversation and the more detailed explanation of the JCI campaigns happening all over the world at this moment, inspiring young people to engage, innovate, and create positive change all over. Absolutely. Now, it has come to my attention that you guys are a little bit quiet. You seem to have gone a little bit asleep. Are you still here? The last couple of days, we've got you guys to engage with each other and talk with each other, and we asked you some questions. And today, is, as we've said, it's the last day of morning show, so we kept the best question yet. Are you ready to talk to somebody new? Yeah! I see a lot of blue people sitting beside each other. Are you ready to go and find some people with orange t-shirts and red t-shirts and everybody mix? And not keep talking to the same person? The question we have for you guys today is, if you could change one thing in the world, what would it be? Try to talk to someone from a different area, or a different country. You can't even talk to someone from your own nation. Are we ready? In five, four, three, two, one, go! Two minutes!
51 seconds. 51 seconds to go. Hello everybody, I'm not Kai, I'm Casper, but I hope you're okay with it. Uh, we like to dance a lot, but we don't like to dance only alone, so I would like you all to stand up. And we know that uh, there is a special song for uh, our General Secretary Arre, uh, which is happening here every morning. So we put some uh, heads together, 
and thought uh, some uh, steps for it, some moves. And I'm going to do them in front, and I'm asking you to try to replicate them. It, it's not too hard, I hope. So, yes, let's, let's try. So amazing. It was a little bit uh, tougher routine, but you are amazing. H how do you feel? Yeah. Indian uh, delegation is looking at the moment. How do you feel here in Goa? Yeah. Do you like spending amazing time with your amazing friends? Yeah. Do you like to go to magical places all over the world for uh, world congresses? Yeah. Super, thank you. Uh, I have a place for you actually, uh, Tallinn, Estonia, super magical place, you can have it all and a little bit more. Uh, next year World Congress, but does anybody know where Estonia is? Show your hands, show your hands. Yeah, it's uh, North Europe, uh, North East Europe next to Finland we like to say. Uh, but do you know what Estonians do? Well, Estonia is a so small country that you cannot believe that they are doing anything. But Estonia is a small country with big actions. Let me give you an example. Uh, we were very, very poor, like just recently. So poor that we even didn't have phones. So, we invented Skype. Actually, a couple of my friends did it from my uh, university. Uh, so that you can connect with us and we can connect with each other doing great things. And another, another example, uh, we were tired of the trash lying around everywhere. So we gathered everybody together and cleaned the whole Estonia. And with the help of you, thank you, thank you. And with the help of you, we had now the World Cleanup Day uh, with 150 countries doing exactly the same thing, cleaning the world. Thank you for you. So now we are doing good. We are okay, don't worry. But we, we work so much that we want to spend time with our family. So we invented e-government. What does it mean? Uh, it takes us only five minutes to do our yearly taxes. Five minutes. We can vote while drinking coffee with our family in the kitchen. We can order prescri prescription medicines and many other things. Uh, just from the home, everything online, so that we can spend more time with our family. And when we are spending more time with our family and not going around, we would like to invite all of you to Estonia, because we are enabling you to be Estonian e-resident. So we invited e-residency, so that you can have all the possibilities to enjoy our innovative technological solutions. Uh, whoever wants to know more, just uh, come to me. Because this place for me, of course I'm from there, but for me it's like a wonderland. Everything is possible, everything is so magical. And I hope that we will give you a little taste of it in 2019 November in Estonia in the World Congress.
Thank you. But we are in a sharing mood. I, I, I know that you, you want to come here, but uh, I believe they want to have one free ticket to the World Congress. Do you think, would you like it? I would like it. Yeah. All, all of those who haven't put their uh, business card uh, to the box which we were collecting in the beginning. Uh, Tanel, where are you? Ah, okay, Kai. Please, Kai, can you go around just uh, very fast uh, to collect the last business cards which will be then uh, uh, where we are taking the lottery from? In the same time, some of you have been in the Estonian booth and uh, you have uh, made a puzzle. Yes, yes, I have all of them here. I would like to invite um, uh, COC uh, Congress Director Kai Greenbaum to the stage as well as uh, Sigrid, uh, the Deputy uh, COC Director. Yes, yes, yes. Give them a warm welcome. And they will take a lottery of who will get the fast track. What does it mean, fast track? When you come to the place, we will make sure that you are registered faster. When you are going to the keynote speakers, we will make sure that you will have a seat in the front. When you are going to the party in the evening, we will make sure that you have a priority lane where you can go faster and many other surprises. And th this, this particular thing is for, for those, for those who, who, who made the puzzle. Yes, and Sigrid is now choosing one of the lucky ones getting the fast track. First is the fast track, not the free ticket, fast track. Uh, so, only if the person is here, he or she will get this prize. Uh, the fast track goes to L. T. Park. Oh, another side. L. T. Park from uh, JCI Madurai Central. JCIL TPAC Secretary 2018 from JCI Madurai Central. Just making it sure, I understand that you want that <laughs> we take another one. You meant the cars, yeah? Next person. Jay Johnson, <laughs> partner, Coel's Creative Group, no JCI card. want to put their business cards in the bag, yeah. Next person, Senator Barasuram Redi Samala, 2008 president from Cheshire Second Bravar Walker Town. It, it's nice that you visit this in booth, however. We try the last one. We try the last one. If, if we don't have it, we take from the other bag because everybody there is there. So those one who sold it and are here, just hold your. So I put this away. Yeah, I, I know because we we are running out of time. Bravin K Sabnis. Goa. Goa. Outbound trainer, impact orator, and mentor, business and life skills coach, Pravin K. Sabnis. You saw? Alright, 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 alright. Yep, 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 yep. 
Yes, 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 yes. yes. Praven Kandant Harail. Congratulations. Okay, and the last one, because I seem to have a luckier hand. Ooh. This is uh, this is a free ticket for the World Congress in Tallinn from 4th of November till 8th of November 2019. Kazuma Degushi. From uh, JCI Osaka. Coming, yeah? Yeah. From Junior Champion International, Kali Kut. You, my man, have won a free ticket to uh, World Congress. Thank you very much. We are out of time. See you in next year. Same time, same fun. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you once again, JCI. I am super excited about Estonia. going to Estonia. Are you excited about this? I'm really, really excited. Uh, we're running short on time, so I guess I'm feeling a little stressed right now. I was going to say you're feeling a bit stressed. I'm a little, a little stressed about time. Ari's over there stressed. We're all, you know, we can get a little stressed. Is there anything we can do about that? It's the last day. Yeah, he's been really busy. He's been up all night creating this kind of video. He's a little bit stressed. Yeah. Like a stress ball? Yeah, I got a stress ball. Look at this, guys. JCI stress ball. Oh. Feeling stressed because we're out of time. You want this one? Yeah. No, never mind. But you know what? I got more. You guys want some JCI stress balls?
overpowered her by charm and color. He came to learn so many things about our life. And the best part, how to control our mind, prioritize, and love ourselves. Now we are going to the General Assembly Hall and we will witness the JCI Vice President elections and the caucus. We enjoy the interview and the caucus of JCI in the Vice President 2019. There was Bangladesh, Lebanon, Venezuela, and now let's wish them luck. Let the best win. Kira, I did something that I think is going to serve two purposes, okay? Yeah. I, I'm supporting the local economy yeah. and also really kind of improving my own look. Bought these glasses. I think they make me look kind of debonair, stylish, almost presidential, I would say. Glasses. <laughs> yeah. I, was this one of those bad ideas that turned into, like, maybe a good idea? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, how about that? Ah, even better? What? You, you want these? Thanks, man. Yes, let it on, right? Yeah. Have fun. Wow, guys, it was really fun attending the JCI World Debate Championship. That too in Spanish. I could not make it out what actually the participants were speaking. Really fun, and the participants were really enthusiastic. And now, after that, we will see them luck. We move to the General Assembly witnessing the change of leadership. What a delightful moment and a matter of honor to be a part of the General Assembly witnessing the transformation of leadership from Brian Lenz 2018 to 2019. What a wonderful leader, Alexander Tayo and Steve. Let's wish him grand success for the coming year and can't we wait for the next event of the night, Japan Night. So let's meet and catch up very soon. Sanskrit word which means sacred water. I think most of you from 
Uh, India will probably recognize the word quickly, but this is for our friends from across the world. Uh, it indicates purity, sanctity, and divinity. Uh, we are a pure Ayurveda resort uh, with yoga as well. Uh, we've been conducting sessions every morning from 6.30 to 7.30 at the launch here. And I'm not sure how many of you have attended the yoga sessions that we've been conducting. Any show of hands? Any of you? Ah, thank you so much. So, um, I welcome all of you to come and visit us there. Uh, just to quickly talk about what and all we do. Um, we offer holistic detox and regeneration uh, packages over there. Um, it's basically set in a very small village uh, by the side of a river and uh, the yoga deck for example overlooks a beautiful river. Uh, it can e easily accommodate about 50 to 60 uh, yoga practitioners practicing it together. Uh, we have a completely professional team that can offer you all kinds of Ayurveda treatments uh, starting from 2 days all the way to 15 day, 18 day packages. And uh, basically uh, the whole idea of Ayurveda, I think a lot of you are aware of how uh, these treatments go. Uh, it's basically cleansing of your mind, soul and uh, your body. And uh, I request you uh, to try it if you haven't already. Uh, it's something that is going to help you in the long term as well as compared to uh, alternate forms of medicine. And uh, yoga I think is something that I don't need to stand here and talk about. It's something everybody is aware of. Some of you or most of you are practicing it as well. And we offer a place where you can learn it in a professional way, practice it in the middle of a quite quiet location. And of course the added advantage of the fact that uh, it's closely linked to Goa which is known as the party capital of India. So, um, I, I also request you, if you need to know any further things about uh, Tirtha Wellness Center, to please visit our stall. We are also part of your trade um, portion of your com compass. So, I welcome you. I once again thank uh, the JCA World Congress team for giving us the opportunity to be a part of it. It's, I can, I've been here part of uh, three morning shows and I can tell you this is by far the best uh, segment of um, a congress that I have seen and I have been associated with quite a few organizations as well. So I wish you well, uh, I wish you well next year as well in Estonia and I hope to see all of you back here in Goa many many more times and especially at Turta. So the gates are open, please do welcome, um, please do attend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, please welcome IPP Dawn Hetzel to talk more about the Global Youth Empowerment Fund workshop. IPP Dawn. And you can go off any way you want this time. Awesome. Yeah. Good morning, Gopa. Good morning. Really, that's all I got. Good morning, Gopa. Good morning. Here we go. Okay, I know it's like almost the last day, and we've been up late, but we gotta get some energy in this room. All right, who knows what the Global Youth Empowerment Fund is? Anybody other than a JCI office? <laughs> okay, a couple. Alex, you don't count. I said other than. All right, who has heard of the Global Youth Empowerment Fund? Okay, a couple more hands. That's good. Okay, so what this is, it's an initiative, it's a collaboration that JCI started with the UN SDG Action Campaign. We talk in JCI a lot about creating collaborative opportunities collaboration and relationships and partnerships and sometimes those are just end up being you know a piece of paper that we sign that says yeah we like each other and we're going to support each other's initiatives but when we really find projects that we can work together on that's what we want to see right these collaborative opportunities and that's exactly what this is the UN SDG action campaign came to us and said hey how can we encourage young people around the world to do projects that support the sustainable development goals. And that's what this fund does. It creates a grant opportunity for any youth-led initiative. It doesn't have to be JCI. It can be a JCI organization, but it doesn't have to be. For any youth-led initiative or project that is working on one or more of the sustainable development goals. And it's a really cool way for us as leaders, as a leading global network,
network of young active citizens to spread that message around the world, to create that sustainable development. It's part of what we do towards sustainable development. And so if you want to learn more about it, about the projects that we've been working on, about ways that you can get involved, or ways that you can share this opportunity with other members of your community, other young people around, please join the panel, or the workshop, at 10.15 in Salon 2 this morning. We'll see you later. Enjoy the rest of the morning show. Thank you so much for this time. Okay, so back home in Ireland, they call me Miss TOYP because I love TOYP. So I'd love to stand here and tell you more about it. But instead, you've got the ever amazing Christy Durant. Thank you, Kira. All right, I think most of you have heard of the JCI TOYP program. It is a program that um, every single year it recognizes 10 outstanding young persons from around the world. At JCI, we have very strong values and we all as members work to achieve our mission to create positive change. And this program is one that we use to demonstrate and recognize other individuals in the world who really live the JCI values and who do work in their own ways to achieve the JCI mission. So we're really honored to have the, the TOIP honorees here with us in Goa. And tonight, you're going to learn all about them during the awards ceremony when we preview their videos that talk all about the details about what they've done and why we as an organization are honoring them. But you guys as delegates have a unique opportunity today. We're doing a workshop at 1115 in Lawn Hall 1 where you get the chance to sit down at a table face to face with these outstanding young people and hear about their stories and what they've done. And you get to ask them questions directly and actually have an intimate conversation with them. So I really encourage you to go. You'll have the opportunity to speak with different people. Um, one of the honorees is being recognized for doing a lot of training and work for inter internally displaced people at refugee camps in Syria. We also have another honoree from South Africa who's doing work to, um, to educate young people and, all, and farmers on sustainable agriculture to, um, to create more sustainable food in the, across the nation of Africa. And we have so many other great inspirational stories. I encourage each of you to go to this workshop today, Juan Hall One. We hope to see you there, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christy. I hope so many of you go to that workshop. It is my favorite thing for our Congress. Oh my gosh, that's it. We are done. That is the last morning show of the 2018 World Congress in Goa. Thank you so much for all of you that were here on day one, when our theme was... Engage. 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 And all of you that were here yesterday, when our theme was... Innovate. And today's theme is change, so go out there and change the world and please come back and see us again at the 2019 World Congress in Estonia. Enjoy your day, thank you so much. That's a quote, it's really pretty good. Thank you guys. Have a great day.